it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Jesus gave it to me, I'm gonna let it shine. Jesus gave it to me. to me I'm gonna let it shine 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 Let it shine. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding, the love of Christ which guards our hearts and our minds, and the joy and consolation of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Merry 10th day of Christmas and Happy New Year. On Wednesday this week, we will celebrate the Epiphany on January 6th, a festival in which we celebrate the arrival of the Magi in Bethlehem, a sign that the good news of Jesus Christ is for the whole world. In Eastern Europe, there is a tradition on the 12th night or on Epiphany to mark an inscription of blessing over the front door of the home. You mark the year and the letters CMB, which stand for either Christe Mansionem Benedicat, which means Christ bless this house, or the legendary names of the Magi, Caspar, Melchior and Balthazar. That's your trivia for today. We invite you on Tuesday night or sometime on Wednesday to mark your own door with this inscription of blessing. You can download instructions from our website or the e-news or there's a link in the chat window for today. But here this morning we gather to bless this house as we prepare sometime this year when it's good and safe for us to do so to return and to gather together together and celebrate that christ does indeed bless this house let us pray may peace be to this house and to all who will enter here when we return. By wisdom a house is built, and through understanding it is established. Through knowledge its rooms are filled with rare and beautiful gifts. John says, The Word became flesh and lived among us. And when we have seen His glory, the glory as of a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth, from his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. Amen. Let's mark the door with an inscription. So first, we mark the blessing. Christe Mansionem Benedicat, or Caspar, Melchior, and Balthazar, and then the year and the sign of the cross, the century, and then the year. Let us pray. 
O oh God, you revealed your Son to all people by the shining light of a star. We pray that you bless this church and the mission to which we are called. May your love be our inspiration, your wisdom our guide, your truth our light, and your peace our benediction. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray. O oh God, on this day you revealed your Son to the nations by the leading of a star. Lead us now by faith to know your presence in our lives and bring us at last to the full vision of your glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let the children come. Good morning, children. Merry Christmas. Today we celebrate Epiphany. That's the day in which we remember the wise men bringing presents for the baby Jesus. When you know there's a new baby, do you ever send presents? I like to send presents to babies, maybe something like this, like a nice board book that a baby could look at and chew and turn the pages as it gets big enough. I like stories like that. They're nice stories for a baby. Or perhaps you might want to send the baby something like this little friend, right? A nice teddy bear is cozy and safe and cuddly for the baby. They might like that. Or maybe you'd like to send the baby something that they could play with, like a little rattle, something that they could chew on and hold and shake and make a little noise, something bright and nice to look at. Or maybe you just want to send a nice blanket to cuddle with for the, for the parents to wrap up that baby and hold nice and cut, cuddly. Those would be good presents. Well, when the wise men came to baby Jesus, they didn't bring this kind of present. Now we say wise men, but we don't really know that they were men. We often say there were three, but there could have been many more than that. We don't know what they were. They may have been scientists or maybe the kind of doctors that watch the stars for signs. They saw the stars when Jesus was born and realized that someone very special was born. They thought maybe a king or maybe God was born. And they brought unusual gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. I have some myrrh right here. Look at this. Would this be appropriate to give a baby? It looks like something you could choke on. It's not soft or cuddly or warm. It seems very, very wrong to give a baby something like that. Maybe the myrrh was, it smells nice. So maybe the myrrh was for the parents. Myrrh may have helped Mary feel better as she was getting better from after the baby came. But it seems as if gold and frankincense and myrrh were gifts that those wise ones brought because they knew Jesus was a special baby, a sign of God coming into the world. And I wonder if those wise ones knew that every baby that comes into the world is a sign of God's love being born. Every baby, no matter who is born, is a sign of God making a new person royal, like a king or queen, someone who carries the goodness of God in the world, as all babies can. Today we celebrate God's love being born. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for baby Jesus. Thank you for bringing your love to the world. Thank you for wise ones who show us your way. Amen. Thanks, children. A reading from Isaiah, chapter 60, verse 1 through 6. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. The sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. 
Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you, and the wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you. The young camels of Midian and Ephah and all those from Sheba shall come. They, they shall bring gold and frankincense, and they shall pr proclaim the praise of the Lord. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to the king's son, that he may rule your people righteously and the poor with justice. That the mountains may bring prosperity to the people and the hills in righteousness. Let him defend the needy among the people, rescue the poor and crush the oppressor. May he live as long as the sun and moon endure, from one generation to another. Let him come down like rain upon the mown field, like showers that water the earth. In his time may the righteous flourish, and let there be an abundance of peace, till the morn shall be no more. May the kings of Tarshish and of the Isles pay tribute, and the kings of Sheba and Seba offer gifts. May all kings bow down before him, and all the nations do him service, for the king delivers the poor who cry out in distress, the oppressed and those who have no helper. He has compassion on the lowly and poor and preserves the lives of the needy. From oppression and violence he redeems their lives and precious is their blood in his sight. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. If you were listening carefully during the reading of that Gospel lesson, you no doubt recognize that this is the Bible passage behind that popular Epiphany Carol. We three kings of Orient are 
bearing gifts we traverse afar, field and fountain, moor and mountain, following yonder star. But we should clear just a couple of things up. First, did you notice that nowhere in the text does it say that there were three kings? The gospel writer simply uses a plural, wise men, in order to say that it was more than one person who followed a star to Bethlehem to see Jesus. Which brings us to a second point. Nowhere does it say that these wise men were kings. Wise men is a translation of the Greek word magoi, which in English we sometimes translate as magi, which means something more like astrologer or magician or sorcerer. You maybe remember that in the children's Christmas program this year, the wise men were introduced to us sitting in an observatory, and they explain, we're really more like scientists, astronomers, We study the stars. The wise men aren't kings at all. They were pagans from other lands who had mastered the stars. Now, I'm not just being nitpicky. The only reason I bring any of this up at all is that the true identity of these gift-bearing, star-following travelers is pretty important. These magi weren't people of great power among the Jewish people. Quite the opposite, they were foreigners who engaged in religious practices that the Jewish people would have found offensive. Practices that would have made them outsiders who didn't have a place in the community. There was no reason to think that they belonged at the manger paying homage to Jesus, the newborn king of Israel. And yet, in today's gospel lesson, that's right where we find them. The people we'd least expect to find anywhere in this story. For a few moments in Matthew's account of Jesus's nativity, they become the main characters. When Matthew included the story in his account of the birth of Jesus, he was pretty clearly making an allusion back to a story written centuries earlier from Isaiah chapter 60, our first reading today. In that passage, the prophet describes how one day outsiders will come streaming into Jerusalem. Israel will be a beacon that radiates the glory of God and the entire world will be drawn to it. Isaiah says, They shall bring gold and frankincense, and they shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. Matthew, writing today's gospel lesson, takes this image of foreigners bringing gold and frankincense and tweaks it just a bit, adding myrrh to the mix. Myrrh being a burial spice used for anointing the dead. How interesting that even in this story about Jesus' birth, Matthew is foreshadowing his death. In today's gospel lesson, Matthew is trying to say that the day Isaiah envisioned all those centuries ago has finally come. Jesus' birth is a turning point for a people who for too long have lived under another emperor's thumb. In Jesus' a new light shines, and God's glory is revealed to the whole world. No longer will God's people be the object of others' scorn. From now on, others will look to them. I want to talk a little bit more about that first lesson from Isaiah. Let's set the context. For centuries, the Jewish people had their own kingdom with its glorious capital in Jerusalem. But empires rise and fall, and eventually the neighboring kingdom of Babylon conquered Jerusalem and destroyed the city. The Jewish people were exiled from their homeland, the promised land 
that God had given them all those generations ago. They spent 70 years living under Babylonian rule. But eventually the Babylonian empire fell and the Jewish people were allowed to return to their beloved Jerusalem. You might think that this opportunity to rebuild their capital and restore their community brought about a collective sense of triumph. And it is true that at first the people were joyful and optimistic, but that was short-lived. It turned out that rebuilding after the exile was messy and hard. The city they loved lay in ruins, and they quickly realized that their rebuilt city would never be as glorious as it had once been. Different factions emerged with divergent ideas about who should be in charge and how things should be. And you have to imagine that some of the younger people who had grown up in Babylon kind of missed the way life had been there and weren't too excited to be about the hard work of rebuilding a city that had never been their home in the first place. That is the context in which Isaiah 60 is written. The era of displacement and estrangement was behind them. The people stood at the brink of a new future. There was reason to be hopeful The days ahead were so full of opportunity. But there was grief about all that had been lost. There were divisions among the people. The journey ahead of them would be long and rough. They had emerged from a crisis, but it would not be smooth sailing. Into this somber and uncertain situation, Isaiah speaks. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. The future is in God's hands, and it is bright. Today, we stand on the brink of a new year. 2020, the year that seemed to last a decade, is finally behind us. Two vaccines have been approved and more are on the way. I've seen photos of several of you who are frontline healthcare workers getting the first injections. And I have felt a surge of hope and relief in my own body as I've been able to imagine this pandemic finally being behind us. There is reason to be joyful and optimistic. And still, the path forward will not be easy. For one thing, many of us are still learning how to go on without people we've loved whose lives have been taken by COVID-19. Grief takes a heavy toll. Even for those of us whose lives haven't been so directly impacted by the coronavirus, Dr. Fauci and others still warn of a dark winter ahead saying that surge upon surge of the virus could make for a grim January. The economy is still in tatters, and economists say it will be years before we return to full employment. Even as life does return to normal, we all know that it won't be like the normal we were used to before the pandemic. Love it or hate it, Zoom is probably here to stay. I worry, will people ever come to worship here in person again, or have we all gotten to really love Sunday mornings at home in our pajamas? Or worse, how many of us just don't feel as connected to Gloria Day anymore, as we've gone months without the kinds of activities and interactions that bind us together as a community? It's not lost on me that even as Matthew hearkens back to the hopeful message of Isaiah 60, he introduces myrrh to the story. The magi come bearing not just gold and frankincense that in Isaiah were harbingers of a triumphant future, but also myrrh. At the end of his life, as he hangs on the cross, 
Jesus will be offered wine mixed with myrrh. And after his death, Nicodemus will show up with myrrh and aloe to prepare his body for burial. It's as though Matthew is preparing us from the very beginning to understand that the new life Jesus offers us does not come without hardship and sacrifice. We don't get to skip over the hard parts. The promise is not that the road will be easy, but that God will be with us throughout. And the destination is resurrection. From the moment he is born, Jesus is destined for death. Even when his disciples try to persuade him to take a different path, Jesus understands he will need to confront the forces of death head on. He embodies the paradox at the heart of our faith, that death is what makes new life possible. As we enter a new year, I feel optimistic. I've been writing on all my Christmas cards in all caps, see you in 2021. And still, I know, the path to the other side of this pandemic will not be all sunshine and roses. In the new normal that emerges from post-COVID-19, I know there will be things we must regrettably leave behind. The future won't be all we'd been hoping for or what we'd expected. But we cling to the promise that Emmanuel, God with us, accompanies us along the path that leads to new life. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Joining our voices with the song of the angels, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Glorious God, fill your church with joy. Let your faithful people live as beacons of your good news. Give wisdom and courage to your church that it may speak with boldness and confidence, even when words of mercy are met with hostility. God of love, shine upon us. Show us your faithfulness in the rising and setting of the stars and the sun. Place wonder into the hearts of those who search the skies and explore the heavens. Curb waste and pollution that all might have clean air to breathe. God of love, shine upon us. Bring all nations and rulers to the splendor of your dawn. Rise up advocates who champion the cause of exploited and vulnerable people. Inspire leaders to be generous with abundance, that all people might live in stability and freedom. God of love, shine upon us. Come quickly with your healing power to all who seek love, support, and restoration. Dispel fears and shadows. Restore broken relationships amend broken hearts. Bring relief to those who are sick or struggling, including those suffering from the coronavirus and those waiting for a vaccine. God of love, shine upon us. Send traveling mercies upon all who journey home by other roads. Guard refugees, immigrants, and asylum seekers. Protect families fleeing conflict in their homelands or abuse in their homes. Tend to those who have no place to lay their heads. God of love, shine upon us. According to the boundless riches of Christ, you draw Sid and all your saints from the least to the greatest to your heavenly places. As you created all things, make all things new again in the splendor of your glory. God of love, shine upon us. God of mercy, come quickly to us with grace upon grace as we lift these and all our prayers to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Magi brought their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh to the child Jesus, signs of their love and adoration. We, too, bring our gifts, signs that we've been captured 
by the wonder and the beauty of this birth and we're willing to offer our lives and our treasure for the mission of this child. Thank you to all of you who gave so generously in 2020. Your love made our mission burn brightly in the world. Of course, we continue to offer our gifts, trusting that God will take whatever it is that we offer and use it to build a world of peace and mercy and justice. If you would like to give to the mission of Gloria Day, you see the link on your screen. Thank you for joining us in our work to welcome, to care, to heal, and to do justice. Let us give thanks for the word. Holy God, designer of the cosmos, architect of the foundations, building block of life. At the birth of time, your word became light into the world. And throughout the ages, you proclaim newness of life. For your wondrous word, we thank you, O God. In the fullness of time, your word became flesh to shine in the world's shadows, to speak peace to all peoples, and to welcome us as members of your family. For your loving word, we adore you, O God. Grant us now the gift of your spirit that held, nourished, and protected by your word, we may live as your children, bearing your goodness throughout the world, 
for your powerful word. We praise you, O God. All glory to you, holy God, now and forever. Amen. We hope you'll join us immediately following this service for our forum. See the link on your screen for GloriaDayCoffeeHour.com. Nancy Agneberg will be leading us today for Crossing the Threshold, Spiritual Practices to Honor the New Year. If you're looking for a way to start this year with new spiritual intentions, you'll be glad you joined us. As part of that intention, we invite you to join the Winter Wellness Challenge our parish nurse is leading. See the information on your screen and join us for this first week of Focused Renewal. On Wednesday, join us for lunch on Epiphany Day. The staff enjoys lunchtime together on Zoom and on the first Wednesday of each month, we invite all of you to join us. We simply check in with each other and see how folks are doing and we'd love to have you. Next Sunday, following worship, a very important chance for us to discuss the relaunching of our new organ and sanctuary renewal project, Rise O Church. You may remember that we paused the campaign last spring as pandemic restrictions were put in place, but after prayerful reflection, we are ready to pick up from where we were, and we need you to join the effort next Sunday, 1030 on Zoom. Here on earth, we have no abiding city, but we seek one that is to come. Our brother in Christ, Sid Swenson, died at the age of 98 on Tuesday. Memorial services are pending. The heart of the congregation goes out to his family in their sorrow. Sid was baptized at the Old Gloria Day and served this congregation faithfully through his life. He was especially faithful in his care of our facility and was instrumental in the goal to restore and maintain it for generations to come. Are we? Uh, we've been talking about m building a new church and moving at Gloria Day for, uh, for, for quite a while, and some of the people be, uh, didn't believe that we ever were gonna, going to move. And so when we, when we got the lots out in Highland Park, we decided to let a contract for the basement of the church to, to prove that we really were serious about building a church. My, my father had a, a construction company and I worked for him at that time. They got an architect to draw up a church. And that's when they decided to go with a colonial style, style church. When we built the, the new church, we, we decided to have the sanctuary on uh, Snelling so that people that were coming on the streetcar up Snelling Avenue could come up the steps and go in the, the front door. Gracious God, who sent the Holy Spirit to Mary, proclaimed joy through the angels, sent the shepherds with good news and led the Magi by a star, bless you today through the word made flesh. Amen.
from the east afar, when they saw this wondrous star, went to find the king of nations, and to offer their oblations to the child. Go in peace. You are loved. Share the joy of this holy birth. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm.